Welcome back to Just Blades Programming. Today we're going to be focusing on drag and drop. This time, we're going to do it way easier than the last time I did it. Like I did it, I did a video before using JS and Rops. In this video, we're not going to be using any of that. We're just going to be using Mud Blazer, as you saw from the thumbnail. So, why am I going to do Mud Blazer when all you need to do is copy paste any of those Mud Blazer examples and you'll have basically a working example on your source code? Well, the reason why is because I believe that there is enough things to go over within those examples in order for you to understand and truly manipulate the thing to whatever you want it to do and to alleviate any confusion there could be. Because even I took a bit of time or to really like, you know, peruse it and go through what's happening in there. So hopefully I demystify things for you. And don't worry, I do know there are things happening in the Blazor world, including Microsoft and Bing AI, you know, using ChatGPT and Blazor United. Yes, I know about these things and we'll go over them in their own videos, okay? All right, let's get started on this one though. So as you can see here, I already have uh, the mud drops, the drag and drop stuff already to go. But in case you wanna know, I have it right here as well. So all I did was go to the mudblazer.com um, website, go to drop zone where it says docs, and you'll find all the component examples here. They have really good examples, which is why I love mud blazer, uh, because they, damn, they're super good. And they even get more complex as you go along, as you can see. So we have really, you know, apples and stuff. Uh, what else? We have a Kanban. Ooh, I like the Kanban one. So in this case, what I'm going to do is go over what's happening in this component, because there seems to be a lot of logic here, or at least, you know, there's enough logic that can be confusing. And there's a lot of other components within this component that's, uh, you know, they're all interacting with each other. So I'm just going to clarify what is happening in this case. So when you go and create your own drag and drop, you'll be able to manipulate this particular one to whatever you might need. Now that you know what the main things to focus on, it's actually quite simple. It just looks, you know, it, it just looks hilarious uh, to the untrained eye. But in case you want to know how to create uh, the actual mud blazer template, I made a video about that. It hasn't changed and we can get started. So just trust me that this is uh, the copy paste job. So I'm going to get started with uh, the actual mud drop container. This thing is actually going to be the uh, the backbone of your drag and drop component. So the reason why is because this will hold your item. It will also be able to uh, know which item was selected when you click on it. And then it will update the item to whatever the identifier is for your drop zone. So essentially it will know which drop zone it is that has been changed to. So this is just uh, essentially generic. So you can have a drop item here. And what you need to make sure is that whatever item you've chosen, you can have whatever properties you want. But as long as one of those properties is a string that is designated to be the actual drop zone identifier. In this case, it is identifier. And it doesn't matter which one it is. What matters is the fact that you have the identifier up here within this item selector because it's going to be using that to guide it basically to tell you which which item has been selected and where. So that's what this is doing. This is the item that's selected and the drop zone that it's in. And then it tries to do, you know, the, the function for that, essentially. Like the item identifier is the equal to the whatever the drop zone is. And then once you do move the actual item between the two, you will activate the item dropped function, which you need. Uh, you need it doesn't matter what it's called here. You just need to make sure that this is what's updating your item. So within here, you'll see that we have a uh, something called a mud item drop info. So if I go look at this object, we'll peek at that. You'll see what it gives us. We have whatever the generic item is. So essentially whatever item you have, and we'll have a drop zone identifier and an index in zone in case you care about ordering. We're not going to go over that right now, but they have an example for that if you want that. Um, in this case, the most important one is the drop zone identifier because this will update your identifier. So when I said it doesn't matter if it's a name or whatever this is called here, as long as it's up here within the item selector, let's say I change this to name and I change this to name. Oops. It should work just fine. Name. Ah, I see why it was. So I'm just gonna put a set here. This might break everything, but this should allow. Yeah, there it is. So 
it doesn't matter what string you use as long as you have a designated string that allows you to assign it to whatever the, the drop zone name is so i'm just going to revert all that we're just going to use the identifier okay, that's also changed go so that is the main thing you have to understand within the mud container now within the mud container obviously we need to have our drop zone so how do we do that well is this child component yeah, I know. There's two things here that I say mud drop zone. So what is with this child component? This child component is basically a render fragment. So in case you don't know about render fragments, I have a video about just about render fragments. Uh, you can watch if you want. But what this is, is essentially something that mud drop container is expecting. So it's expecting one big render fragment that's made up of the drop zones you're going to have in here. You can have as many drop zones as you want. It doesn't matter. Um, but you do need this child content because look what happens if I remove it. It's going to complain because things are no longer as they should be. So mud drop container definitely expects this render fragment. And within that render fragment, within the child content here, we have our mud drop zone. So this is where the actual, you know, the drop zones are. So the drop zones have an expected item. In this case is whatever the item the mud drop container expects. And then here you can have, here's where you actually have the identifier. So the name of the drop zone that you will be using to uh, label which items belong to where and then if you and then you see how there's a bunch of class here don't worry about that all the classes is just the classes of your css so if you have css classes you want to use you can use them here you could also if you feel like doing it this way mud laser also allows for style so you can have um you know just style content in there so and then within here these are the names of your of your drop zones. In this case, it's a hard coded name uh, using mud text. And I'm not going to go over mud text like you can probably guess what it does. And then you have two drop zones here, two different names, classes, another hard coded uh, name in there. And then mud text to wrap it all around. And then all that is part of this child content, which is your render fragment. So that leaves us to this thing down here. What is this item render? Well, this item render is basically what your item is going to look like. So I'll show you the manipulations of it in a second, but this is what we expect our items to have. So just so we could see it easier, I'm going to change this style to background, background color. I'm going to change it to red. And then we're going to change the drop zone, drop zone one. So where the drop zone is, we're going to add a, a now another style, but not red. You know, we're going to make it a different color, make it like blue or something. But we have to get rid of this here. This class will override the styling. So you have to get rid of the, the mud, um, the mud background gray stuff. And then this mud paper thing here, mud paper is what you actually see like the elevation. So when I run this, I'll just show it to you. Well, the drop zone is actually really simple. Just remember the identifier stuff and you'll be good. So as you can see here, the item render was the one that had the red stuff, the red background. And then the, uh, the drop zone one had the blue background that I assigned to it. So this is what controls the template for the so the item renderer controls the template for our items. In this case, the mud paper, you can't really see it like this. So I'm just going to go back to this one real quick. The mud paper is actually what you see down here where it says like it looks like a shadow down there. That's the elevation. That's what mud paper is. And it's like the easy, no CSS way of actually making uh, something like this look good. Basically, that's how they describe it. So if you want to keep using their mud paper, you should. And there's nothing much more to it than that. Once you understand that all it is, is just making sure your mud drop container knows what item is ex it has within it and knowing when to properly update the item, you're, you're done. The drop zone is actually really easy here. There's no JS interrupts that needs to be done. There's nothing um, extra else that you can do. And it's all based on how creative you want to be and the logic you want to add into the code. So that's what they do basically for these examples or not this one. Uh, in these other examples, let's go down to this one here where it has like 
uh, basically I can't put it here, but I can put it here. They actually have more logic here in order for you to um, to 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 make limited uh, limitations in drop zones depending on what you can put in or whatever. And it can go much further than that. And my favorite thing is this Kanban here because Kanbans, you know, as a developer, you're gonna be using Kanbans a lot. Uh, with agile development is basically ubiquitous these days, so get used to seeing this. So it's really nice to have something like this um, in case you ever have to work on some uh, so software as a service for other people or something. This is a pretty decent way of of giving out uh, information. And you have chess. Look at that. Too bad there's no. Too bad there isn't any logic here, but you can fix that, right? You want me to fix it? You want me to make this chessboard work as a tutorial or something? You let me know. Uh, but that's it. There's something else really else uh, out there for me to say. So I'll let you guys go. And if you want, like, subscribe. Check out my free Blazor cheat sheet. It's still available. And it hasn't been updated to .NET 7 just yet because, unfortunately, the binding enhancements have not been updated from what I can tell. So see you later. And, you know, bye.